one, Master Xeon 1001 here. Typically after a release, we tend to do a few micro updates to fix various things. In this update, we sought to fix the camera, high DPI displays, the way lights were being tracked, as well as um, small bugs. Uh, we added voxelization text, we expanded on ST3 array a little bit and, and fixed the sharp markings in addition to a few small quality of life things. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Shortly after release, it was found out that if you were to deselect an object and press Q and add a camera, and then press F9 and just play with the F9 settings, you'll receive an error. I'm happy to announce as of the latest update that that has been fixed. So now you can just add your camera, you can click on the buttons all you want, and there won't be any issue happening anymore. Uh, had ST3 touch that up. In addition to that, markers are made whenever you add a camera. So we can just add another camera just here to select, deselect, and just add another camera. And we can just quickly jump back and forth between two separate cameras. So just showing that we want to make some additional improvements to add camera. Another favorite of this last release is the ability to press Alt V and press B in order to go under blank light. And you can just add a bunch of lights that you can then just begin using as a starting point. However, if you move the lights, you'll see that they're not actually tracked to anything. So this was something that was requested. Over in 2.9, where we have the latest update, we can press Alt V, B, and just cycle through some lights, just scroll through a random configuration, and we see that the lights are automatically configured, making your life lighting a lot easier. Previously in Hard Ops, if you were to press Q, go under Settings, and use Voxelize Object, it would just voxelize it, and you wouldn't be able to tell that anything happened unless you tabbed in Edit Mode and looked at the voxelize result. In fact, if we go in and voxelize a second time, then it starts to eat the edges and you can really see the effects of voxelization. In the latest update, we wanted to make sure that if users went in and used voxelization settings that it would at least display the amount of voxelization that occurred on the mesh. So if we undo that, we can also see that voxelization options are also added to the control tilde helper under the general options. So if you wanted to go in here and make adjustments to the settings, and hit voxelize, you're able to do that like so. In fact, we can press Q, go under add modifier, add a smooth, and just begin rolling the smooth to get a little bit smoother result. And I've been using this lately to begin messing with the new sculpt brushes and giving myself a good equalizing starting mesh starting out for sculpting such things. We were quite pleased with the reception to ST3 Array V2. So under the Hops dropdown, under the opt-in options, we can opt in to the ST3 Array V2. And improvements have been made to make it where whenever you're using certain types of scaling, that it will perform better. Previously, it was reported that there were issues when it came to dealing with objects that had a very specific type of scale under constant. Of course, with uh, Array V2, I love to press V and actually use the new type of array that actually lets me adjust the count in between. In addition to these fixes, we've also made it where you can press tab and it will just pause it, which is something that we're experimenting with. Of course, you still have the hotkey of F to pause and unpause in the event that you're needing to pause your operation. But if you also want to try using tab, that's something that we're experimenting with inside of the V2 just to see what we can do for the workflow going forward. When it comes to hard ops, manual marking is par for the course. And when I refer to marking, I'm talking about using the operation of sharpen, which will mark the mesh according to certain angles that are being found. But when it comes to manual control, there is edit mode, which also has S mark. So there are some issues in this latest release. For example, if we were to just select to here and we go under our mark panel, and under sharp options, we only have crease check. That means that when we press Q and we choose mark, this happens. However, if we extend our selection and we press Q and we choose mark, it actually extends the mark, which is actually the desired behavior. But you also see that it doesn't unmark it, which is actually quite problematic. In addition to this, um, we attempted to do some improvements for it to make it behave better. However, some of those improvements didn't quite take. So. We can just select this, mark it, jump to here, mark it, and we see that it still isn't performing the way it's supposed to. So this is something that we looked into as well. 
If we go over to 2.9 and I were to just bevel the same edge and we go under our helper for the mark settings and we just look at what we have here. I just want to show that you can now mark and it will mark properly. And if we extend our selection, it will unmark it properly and remark it as specified. And this is the same for everything. So if you want to use sharp and make it mark only creases, you can and extend it on. Let's see, for some reason it wasn't extending and demark and remark is the desired behavior. And the same thing, of course, with bevel weight and sharp, which comes in handy for alternative types of workflows involving using bevel weights and using an auto smooth workflow. So I just wanted to show that we took some steps towards improving this for its last release and making sure that you weren't ending up with an issue with your selection actually flip-flopping through the sharp process. So to start off this example, I will just tab into edit mode, press two to go to edge mode, select this edge, and we'll control click mark in order to just bevel this edge. And we'll select this edge and we'll control click mark in order to bevel this one individually as well. So the next thing we'll do is press Alt X and mirror to the other side. I'll press D and switch over to Ngon. And we will just draw a quick shape and extrude it. Press B to bevel, spacebar to apply. And this is our shape. Let's say I wanted to apply this shape. Well, if I go under operations and use smart apply, you'll see that everything gets applied except for the last modifier in the back. And it's not that that modifier didn't get applied, it's that its data got destroyed because in this case, a vertex group modifier must be applied because it's a construction bevel. It's not something that's able to have modifiers applied around it non-destructively or destructively without its data being compromised. So to show this issue being resolved, we will actually control C copy this and over in 2.9, I will just delete this cube and press control V. And anytime I'm copying and pasting things that are live like this, I'll always end up with the bull shape in the wrong collection. And for this reason, you're able to basically have an active selection, go under settings and just control click on, e, on evict slash unified to just throw that back into the proper collection of cutters, basically purifying your collection. So if we go in here and we choose smart apply, you see that now it keeps it where it's supposed to be. Previously, the way that I would get around such issues would be to go in and let's undo this, let's redo, make sure it's live, is I would put a bevel on top of it. And then whenever I use smart apply, it would actually keep the last bevel live, which is the intended goal. But the issue was that if there was no top bevel to keep the other two bevels to not be considered the prime bevel, it would actually not apply those as they were supposed to. So I'm happy to announce that they've been resolved, making Smart Apply just a little bit smart. When we first added the ability to press Control, Alt, Shift, and L to move the logo, the system that we added for it was a little cursory. I just put notification text to at least say to X, Y, AR made it where when you press A, it would basically recenter the logo on the cursor and you could roll the wheel to scale it how you want it and then just place it. However, I would consider that more of a V1. As of the latest update, you can now try the latest version, which is what I would consider a proper V2. So we'll press Control, Alt, Shift, and L. And you can see that now it actually throws you inside of a fast UI. And you can even do crazier things that I didn't even request, like the ability to press C and move your mouse around to change the color. However, this is something that it, I must admit is still a work in progress. And the moment I saw this, I was like, we should come up with something more useful for this than just shading the logo. But it is pretty nice to be able to just move your mouse around, change the color, press G, position it, and voila, your logo has been placed.